Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. So Satya will do the presentation in a while. Thanks, everyone. morning everybody uh, hi and welcome to our session today uh, today we'll be looking at a drive setup and we'll be basing it on our commander c drives so i'd like to introduce myself i'm the technical manager for east asia zone in uh, asia pacific excluding china for direct control techniques so we'll be jumping into our session today. So thank you for joining us. So for uh, just to check with you, uh, you guys can hear me. Just uh, give me uh, a feedback that you guys can hear me well. Yes. Okay, so uh, we'll move forward. So we'll be just looking at drives. Uh, when we talk about drive setup, we'll be looking at uh, installation of the drive, and we'll be looking at how to wire up. Uh, what are the what are the things that would be affecting the wiring? And we'll be looking at some basic parameters. So this is more of uh, how to say uh, of how to look at a drive when it comes to the manual, right? So we won't be looking at uh, specific configurations or in-depth uh, communication or interfacing. We'll be just looking at uh, how to use or what are the information to look for in a manual that comes with the drive. So something similar to a, uh, when we buy a TV or television or like a mobile phone or anything that, that we use, we tend to have, we usually have a user manual and then uh, we'll, we, we will be looking at the things that we only use. Let's say uh, I want to I want to connect to the Wi-Fi using the television. So we'll be just looking at that specific uh, information and then the rest of the information we won't be really uh, looking at. So now we are allowing us to look at what are the things that comes with the manual and what are the things to look for when you're trying to install or when you're trying to use and so on, right? So when it comes to installation, uh, our Commander C comes with a power installation guide. So this is an installation guide where most of our mechanical installation, uh, electrical installation details are given. All right. So these are the power installation guide. So these are downloadable in the uh, website, Control Technique website. So I'm, I'm very sure. Uh, the drive uh, manufacturers are coming with up uh, comes up with a manual that says uh, these are the information that you need to look at and so on so as you can see as you can see uh, for commander c c200 c300 we have frame one to four it has a, uh, it has a, a frame five to six and then we have frame seven to ten so when we talk about frame one two three and so on it's basically a frame size so it's a drive size so we are familiar with uh, sizing our drives at kilowatts or horsepowers so in in our power installation guide it basically talks about the frame size so this is uh, for us to know frame size one no matter what the power rating is, because we may have a few power ratings, we'll look at it later. It's the same installation space that it's going to take up. So it's the same size, dimensions are, dimensions are the same, the weight would be the same. So it's a reference that we can take. So frame one drives will be same across the different kilowatts. Frame size five would be same across it. So the uh, mechanical details, electrical details, the talk details would be similar. So they are divided into these categories like frame 1 to 4, frame 5 to 6, and then frame 7 to 10. 
So what can we find in the power installation card? We can find the safety information. So uh, uh, let's say uh, when you're powering up or what are the, you you'll need to be careful when you power down, you try to open. So you, you, you have to be careful with the voltages that are uh, 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 present. Uh, and what are the things like uh, general safety stuffs and product information. So what, what uh, information uh, you need to know about the product, like let's say model name, uh, uh, the label that it says, like what, what does the label mean? What, are, what is the number, like date code, where to look for a date code and so on. Then you'll have a mechanical installation uh, information and then you have electrical installation information, technical data, real listing information and so on. So this is bit particularly uh, uh, accurate for our C200. Even pretty much all of our drive range would have something similar. They'll, they'll go by frame sizes. So these are the information that you can find over there. So we have a control user guide and then we have a power installation guide. So control user guide is more like how to interface, uh, what are the uh, control uh, parameters, what are the control possibilities that you can do without drive. And then the power installation guide is more of what you need to know to install the drive. Okay. So uh, when we talk about power product information, so this is the information that we have. Let's say uh, we have a C200034 00073A. 10101AB100. So the first derivative is whether it's a M400. So these are the obsolete products. We are familiar with our product line. And then you have commander C200 and C300. So if it's a C200, then you get a C200. C300 is C300. It's straightforward. And then you get a frame size 03, which starts from 01 all the way to 10. For other ranges, we do have up to frame 11. And then this is our voltage. And this is our current rating. So typically, you may be familiar with uh, drives that are labeled the power rating. So here we are labeled based on current ratings. So for C200, it's a heavy duty rated. A is uh, AC in and AC out. Uh, this, this number is uh, reserved. And then you have documentation, whether it's uh, supplied separately or by default it's in English, French, Italian, German, uh, Spanish. So typically for our region, it will be in English, unless you, sp you specifically need a French manual or Italian manual and so on. And then you have a customer code. So this customer code is basically de defining whether it's a 50 Hertz region or 60 Hertz region. And then A is air cooled. We still have all the drives as air cooled. And then B, this uh, number would tell you whether it has a breaking transistor built in or it doesn't. Okay. Then we have a IP rating, IP20, standard coating. This number is reserved. Okay. So based on this, earlier we looked at all the power installation guide was based on frame sizes. So this is where we look at frame size. So this is a frame size three drive. Okay, so for to, to to get information about installation, we have to look at a manual that says uh, just now we we had a, we'll be looking at this manual for a frame size three drive and uh, respectively. Okay. When uh, I did have few customers who, who who were not familiar, this is a, a question of uh, familiarity basically. So they were not familiar with the frame sizes. So what we can do is this is the table that we get from the catalog. So for a 200 volt, you can see uh, it's a uh, frame size one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. And here's the power rating have a heavy duty rating and then you have a normal duty rating. So the difference between heavy duty and normal duty is uh, more of your application. So normal duty is for pump, it's uh, for fan, it's in, in, in other words, some of you may be familiar with the 
variable talk. So variable talk meaning uh, when you have your talk requirement, talk demand would vary from start to end. When your speed is increasing, your talk demand is going to increase. Like when you run a fan faster, your load is higher. So when you're running, uh, you're running pump faster, your load is higher. But on a heavy duty application, it's a constant talk application. So it's just a way of uh, uh, some of some of uh, the manufacturers would, would use a constant talk, variable talk. We use heavy duty and normal duty. So heavy duty is basically constant talk. When you when we say constant talk, your con, uh, your talk demand is always same. Uh, I wouldn't say same. It's like even if you're running at one hertz, your your talk demand could be hundred percent. All the way when you're going faster or slower it's always 100 percent or maybe it could be 80 percent so it's a constant talk application heavy duty so up to here up to frame size 4 3 kilowatt when you have this it doesn't have a separate heavy duty or normal duty uh, rating and beyond that you have 4 kilowatt as a heavy duty and then uh, this is also applicable as 4 kilowatt and then you can see there's a difference 7.5 5.5 11 7.5 so your normal duty rating is always higher than your heavy duty rating so uh, you can always look back if if you are uh, if you're very familiar with the power ratings then you look at the power rating and you look at the model number you can see this is a frame size 6 for a 7.5 kilowatt heavy duty if you are if you are having a, a normal duty drive, that's frame size five, three and five ampere drive. Okay, this is for two hundred volt drive. Similarly, you have a table for four hundred volt drive. Same setup. Frame rating. Frame size one frame size 2 all the way up to frame size 9 so i have made a quick uh, summary based on that table so for frame size 1 on a 200 volt so these are the ratings this is like a summary table so you don't have to look at uh, try to find from the uh, bigger table so just if you want to look at the frame size this is your summary table for 400 for 200 volt and 400 volt So now we know which drive is uh, what size. So uh, imagine we have uh, we already found our uh, frame size. Then now we are looking at uh, the manual itself. So one of the information that you can get there is mechanical installation information. So when I say mechanical installation, it it means. Uh, Fitting the drive into a panel, or it could, what are the in, uh, what are the clearances, and so on. So we look at uh, features that uh, that's there. So planning the installation, we need to decide before. Okay, we have a drive. Before you, we, we want to we want to decide whether we want to put it in a panel, or we want to put it like uh, uh, like on on the wall itself, and no pan, uh, no uh, no panel on it. So we need to decide whether it has to be. Uh, protected and uh, only accessible by authorized personnel so that would decide uh, the kind of panels sometimes we will just have uh, uh, the standard key lock or we don't even have a key lock anybody can come and open the uh, the panel and there will be so it decides so we need to decide whether it's going to be authorized by personnel you have a, a key lock for people to like really open up the panel and look at the drive or walk around the drive so access would be a first uh, consideration so how you're going to protect the access then the second one is environmental protection this is more of uh, ip rating uh, ip requirement uh, the drive comes with the uh, ip20 and ip21 so anything higher uh, let's say you want to go for ip54 ip44 so those requirements you can actually decide based on a panel because uh, based on our exper experience, uh, we we have simulated cases where 
Putting the drive in an IP55 or 54 panel is much more, much more economical than getting the drive itself to be IP54 or IP55. So, uh, of course, uh, the current situation with all the uncertainties, we still we will, we will have to look at uh, options where we can save and without compromising the quality of a product. So, uh, getting an IP20 drive in an IP54 or 55 or even 65 panel is much more effective. Also, of, of course, it depends on uh, considerations on 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 uh, uh, end user. Yeah, so the panels would be protecting from moisture, electrically conductive material, let's say for carbon uh, carbon based dust. Uh, sometimes dust that can block the fans a a passage, your airflow kit could be affected, and some of the uh, dust could could accumulate and block the air passage within the drive and not just the drive even in, inside the panel so this could actually uh, increase the heat dissipation capacity of the panel or even the drive and then uh, if the ambient temperature is beyond the specified uh, temperatures of uh, operating and storage and of, uh, and corrosive gases so these are the environmental protections that we need to consider for deciding how we're going to install uh, how and where we're going to install the drive uh, of course another factor is cooling so let's say if it's a sealed up uh, enclosure which means we need to use a larger or larger fan or you need to use a internal air circulating fans so these are more of making sure the drive is heat dissipation because drive is going to generate heat it has it will generate heat because we can, it's going to do some work it will generate some heat so this heat has to be dissipated into the environment so one of the reason that we talk about uh, ambient temperature is if our ambient temperature is too high and our drive is trying to dissipate the heat then uh, the heat dissipation is not as effective as it is uh, on the uh, rated ambient temperature okay so whatever uh, drive capacity whatever the current limitations uh, whatever protections so all of those are tested and verified for the rated ambient temperatures so if you're going beyond that and then your operation will be affected it has to be derated we are expecting higher temperature ratings uh, ambient temperatures it has to be derated yeah and uh, fire protection so this drive is not uh, specified for as, as a fireproof, uh, fire protected uh, drive. So it has to have come with a separate fire enclosure if uh, the requirement uh, is needed to be fire protected. Other information that we get from the, from the manual power installation guide is the dimensions. So this dimensions is basically, uh, let's say you have a drive then of course when you're trying to build a panel you need to make sure the drive can fit in so the smaller drives okay we can we can still look around so bigger drives we we need to know what is the size before get we get the drive so you get the size information okay so you can see this is up to uh, this is sample from the frame size one to four the a right? let's say this is the panel from here here you can see the gap is zero inches okay so the B the top clearance you can see you have 100 mm clearance okay so which which simply says that from frame size 1 to 4 the clearance that you need between the enclosure is zero you, you can just fit it in uh, side by side you don't have any issues of uh, uh, when uh, heat dissipation issues when you're trying to put it side by side so you don't need uh, some uh, typically it's a 100 mm clearance for most of the drives so for us you can just uh, so this manual if you if we do not know this information from the manual so we would uh, ideally say okay i need to put a space between the drives uh, that, that, that's 100 mm that makes our panel larger so these are the small I wouldn't say small uh, things that we often overlook 
and it could cost us so one of the reason i would uh, suggest my uh, uh, clients who or customers who use the drive is first is you try to learn as much as possible from the manual and of course uh, we are here so we can we can highlight these information to you so that you can benefit from that uh, by reducing cost when you're trying to fill a panel and yes this uh, just imagine you have a uh, 10 drives you're gonna stack them together side by side and imagine you have 100 mm for all of them okay so in between gap that's about nine 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 times 100 mm so there's a lot of space that you lose out just because you had to leave a space between the drives so this could be useful information that we get from the drive sorry from the uh, installation guide here you can also see uh, it it provides enclosure layout so this imagine this is the enclosure so this is basically a screenshot from the uh, power installation guide it, it tells you how much space you need like uh, for other devices as well so so this is the enclosure wall so space between the enclosure wall to the drive and then to other devices let's say you have uh, you have external EMC filters. So, what is the gap that you need to give? Uh, it also suggests that if you're having a breaking resistor and overload, to be installed outside. So, these are uh, information that allows us to effectively and efficiently use the drive within our specs. Okay. So, enclosure sizing. So, usually we, we size the enclosure not just based on uh, the drive's size. We also need to uh, take into account based on power dissipation. Earlier we were talking about heat dissipation, so that's basically power. So how effectively heat is circulated or heat is dissipated within the within the panel. So from drive, not, uh, not just the drive that dissipates uh, heat. Let's say you have external EMC filter, it dissipates heat. If you have uh, breaking resistors which you install outside, so that dissipates heat. So whatever components that's within the drive, even cables do dissipate, uh, uh, to do dis dissipate uh, heat. So all of these considerations will be taken into account before we size up the enclosure. Okay. So uh, the the manual uh, provides you some calculations. So typically, if we have been building panels, uh, the calculation part or the sizing part, you pretty sure already like uh, you have a template for this size is that but if you are trying to reduce the size in order to reduce your cost uh, it's uh, worthwhile to look at the calculations to make sure you are you are not uh, hurting the heat dissipation capacity of the enclosures okay. it also provides uh, external EMC filter so all of our drives they come with internal EMC filters okay but uh, for smaller drives you may choose to have external emc filters uh, when uh, there's already external uh, noise the noise from the network itself is too much and so on so you you may choose to have an external emc filter so the the manual provides part numbers the dimension weight cable size talk settings on on these uh, filters so you have uh, like let's say a model c200 uh, 054 010 so that you have a specific model then you have a specific part number attached to it so you can just order like uh, in a table one to one so if you're using that uh, particular drive then you can just buy that particular uh, part number so you can just match them together Okay, so this is external EMC filter, but by default, all of the drives will come with the internal EMC filter, which you can use, which is effective enough. So this external EMC filter is uh, just to meet uh, certain requirements. Uh, so this, whatever we have discussed on the mechanical portion, this is not an exhaustive list. There are a lot more to it, but these are the usual ones that we usually look at. So now we will uh, look at wiring, electrical insulation. 
so uh, for power terminals frame size one your control AC DC braking and motor terminals go from the bottom so all of the cable entries are from the bottom same goes for frame size two three four so th this information is uh, particularly uh, important or good to look at to decide your cable layout in a panel so if you have the drive itself yes it's you can uh, really see uh, like it's visual so if you watch uh, straight forward but if it is not if you, if you just uh, order the drive and you're waiting for it you're, you're preparing a panel and this information will be helpful for you to help you do the layout easier okay so of a frame size 5 you have the power terminal AC power terminal here and then you have DC and then the braking terminal covers on top your con control terminal is here so so this is the control control port or control uh, controller we, we say it's a controller so here would be the control terminals pretty much across the frame sizes so frame size six, same AC power terminal at, from the bottom. Uh, when we say AC and power or power, AC is the input, power is the output. You have a DC. So DC means you have a DC plus, DC minus uh, terminals over the top. Then you have a braking terminal. So for frame size seven, AC and DC power is from top. Okay. So when we say AC and DC, AC is L1, L2, L3. DC is DC plus and DC minus. <clears throat> then at the bottom, you have AC motor and braking resistor terminals. Excuse me. <clears throat> and of course, uh, control terminal cover. Frame size 8, you can see similar AC and DC from top, AC motor and braking from the bottom, the control terminals from the bottom, uh, AC and DC power from top, AC motor braking resistor from the bottom, and a control terminal. Same goes here. You can see there's a frame size 9A and 9E. The difference is uh, 9A comes with an internal choke, AC internal choke, and then frame size 9E does not come with the frame size. So that's basically an option, okay? Uh, why do we have this option is, uh, it allows customers to like reduce the panel size because your internal choke could be installed by the side or from the bottom of the panel. So you don't have to have a very tall panel uh, and, and it's heavy as a whole thing. So it's, it's more of a convenience for your installation. So you can choose to have the choke inbuilt. You can choose to have no AC choke inside the drive, and then we can get the AC choke outside to install. Okay, so this option is available on frame size nine, but not for eight and so on. So the, all the previous drives have the chokes built in. Okay, for frame size one, you can see this is the terminal. You have L1, L2. For 110 and 240 supplies, single phase, and that's our DC plus and braking terminal for braking resistors. We'll we'll have a look at uh, how to connect a braking, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a braking resistor connection later on. UVW is quite straightforward. For frame size two. You can see L1, L2, L3. So this is applicable for 110, 240, 400, three-phase. Okay. 
so you can see it's not a flat out so your l1 l2 l3 is over the top uvw minus plus and br br is the breaking resistor connection frame size 3 it's all straight in line l1 l2 l3 negative plus breaking resistor uvw as you can see the pe or the power earthing is connected over here so you don't have a power connection over here so it's here okay frame size 4 similar l1 l2 l3 minus plus br uvw okay. when it comes to frame size 5 uh, now then we move to removable connectors so you have l1 l2 l3 uvw typically uh, we would have to connect the uvw first before you connect to l1 l2 l3 because uh, otherwise it would be not i wouldn't say not possible it will make it difficult to connect the uvw so you just connect uvw first and then you plug it in so it's basically plugging in so it doesn't really uh, matter so much it's doable Uh, as you can see, most of these uh, sections, it has optional RFI filter. That's basically the external EMC filter. So it's optional. You can choose to have it, but uh, the drive already comes with the internal EMC filter. Just to remind you on that. The protective earthing, one here, one here, one for the power input, one for the motor up, uh, output. Frame size six. Then we move into one l1 l2 l3 uvw from the bottom and our dc and input is on the top for frame size 7 this is the bottom portion uvw dc plus and pr Frame size 9A, we get uh, L1, L2, L3, DC plus, DC minus. So you can see you, we have the internal EMC filter over here. So our EMC filters, you can actually remove uh, in cases where it has to be removed. Uh, there are uh, instances where the line is too noisy already, even without the drive. So when we connect the drive, the EMC filter basically uh, <clears throat> uh, removes or, or filters the noise to earth. So when that happens, uh, th there's a possibility that if the, if the RCCB or earth leakage protection is the threshold is too low, then this leakage would be counted as an earth leakage and there's a possibility that the ELCB will trip. So in some cases, we, we cannot do anything with the ELCB. We cannot upsize them. It's not adjustable. And the line is already too, too noisy. There's, there's instances we advise them to remove this uh, EMC filter. So the removing would be just, uh, for this case, you just remove the EMC filter's screw so that you don't really need to uh, remove covers or whatsoever. So just remove a screw, then your EMC filter is isolated. So basically what we do is like we just remove screw here. It cuts off this connection and then your EMC filter is isolated. And then for frame size 9E, it's uh, just L1, L2, L3. You don't get the DC plus and DC minus. And for bottom, UVW, DC plus, and break. This is an interesting part where a breaking resistor is being used. So when we use a breaking resistor, what it ha what it does is basically we are connecting a DC bus plus to our negative. Basically, we are trying to discharge the energy. So what happens is the switching the breaking transistor within the drive will be switching and making contact with the negative end so the resistor is basically connected to positive and negative and it's just taking the energy dissipating as heat okay so 
never ever connected to positive and negative so it's usually it's always positive to breaking resistor so plus to br okay so uh, we suggest that you use a thermal protection device on a breaking resistor because we need to make sure the breaking resistor is functioning properly if it is too hot we need to uh, cut down the drives operation in order to protect the breaking resistor okay so I, otherwise the, the breaking resistor is too hot and we are still trying to dissipate more and more energy using the breaking resistor and it breaks then it directly affects the drive uh, the breaking resistor is gone once that's gone all of that energy goes back to the drive and then the drive is gone so it's a mess so to protect all of that is we, we try to have a thermal protection device so this circuit would disconnect the drive from the supply so once it's too hot or it's too it's not safe to operate when the braking resistor is too hot your drive does not run at length and then we can do the diagnosis thing saying that okay we have a thermal protection device uh, kicking in then we know uh, our braking resistor is having an issue one is one possibility is that it has been aged up uh, or it has been undersized it's been uh, uh, when, when we say undersized is we, we 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 can easily miscalculate the duty it could be a 50 percent uh, breaking and we we may have done 10 percent calculation so it depends it, it gives us it allows us to reevaluate uh our breaking resistors sizing instead of really spoiling it and then we we, we end up stopping our line and so on okay, okay. So uh, let me see if we have uh, questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, one question is, uh, why do we need a choke? Okay. Choke has few uh, implications. So one of the uh, implication is, uh, we have uh, harmonics when, whenever we have a drive or whenever we have a rectifier used in uh, used in circuits electronic circuits if we have an ac and then we change it to dc th that would allow us to have uh, harmonics so we had a discussion about harmonics uh, last week on energy efficiency so one of the way we can reduce harmonics that the drive introduces back to the grid you can use a choke Okay. So, give me a sec. so a choke would help us to reduce harmonics one, and then whenever you have voltage transients, I say your your line has some kind of spikes, you have notches. So a choke would help to to uh, how to I wouldn't say filter. It it's like a, you know capacitor smoothes uh, DC bus. And then the choke smooths the AC line. So what, whenever you have a DC component in a in a AC line, and the choke would help us to reduce those DC components, and that DC component does not affect our drive and our application. So the choke, uh, the, the two immediate uh, things that you can think of is it helps your it helps to improve your power quality in terms of harmonics, and it uh, it helps you to uh, manage power transient. Uh, uh, events and protect your drive so that it, it works it protects the grid it protects the drive okay okay what is the gap between two drives okay this information can be found on the on the manual so typically root let me let me have a look at it I think I'll come up with the answer with an email for that but it's it's available so it, it you can find that information it's I think if I'm not wrong it's going to be 100 mm if I'm not wrong I could be wrong uh, but I'll come back to you by the end of the session to make sure I answer that uh, what is a conformal coating in VFDs? 
so conformal coating is basically a, a layer of uh, protection uh, layer of protection basically it's a when it's basically a coating okay but uh, let's let's imagine you you have a woodwork and then you want to protect the uh, woodwork maybe a furniture so then they 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 uh, they like they put up a lacquer layer to protect it from the harsh environments to, to make sure it lasts forever not, not forever but for, for long so it's a coating to protect the drives components because drive components are electronic components so they run on uh, electricity so they have bare wires so they have connections so these connections should not be affected by dust but like, when we say dust dust can be a carbon based dust it, it could be electrically conductive dust it could be just uh, uh, random uh, it may not affect but it can also uh, accumulate and heat up the component so that's dust okay so we try to uh, we try to isolate the components from the environment so when the dust is on top of it the only issue that we're going to have is heat dissipation and not uh, any shorts or stuff like that so in that case okay, in that case why do we call it conformal coating the coating needs to be uh, conformance to standards to make sure it's just not like blocking off the because there's there's two factors one is you block off the dust from the from the environment so once you do that there's another then the second question comes in that components are isolated from the environment so how do we dissipate the heat from the component to the environment so the conformal coating when we say conformal coating so all of these heat dissipations all of that is covered okay so your heat dissipation is covered and your dust protection is covered so if it's just a coating so normal coating maybe your protection is good but your heat dissipation is not there so that's why we have conformal coatings on PFDs. It's, it's pretty much applicable to a lot of uh, electronic uh, products so whenever we have a electronic conformal coating was not the standard back uh, quite a lot of decades ago, decades ago it's an expensive coating so now it's pretty much uh, on every other coating because you can uh, get few manufacturers they would say if you need a conformal coating you need to like specifically mention but for our drives all of the drives comes with a conformal coating and you have to specifically say if you don't need a conformal coating so it, it works the other way around okay uh, how to calculate a brake resistor and power value so all of the drives come with a uh, suggested power uh, braking resistor value uh, resistor value meaning uh, resistance and the power sizing so the power sizing is is really depends it, it depends on your uh, duty cycle so if you let's say if you're breaking 50% of the time all of the time you're gonna start and then you're gonna stop so in in that case we will have to have 100% uh, of your drive capacity let's say your drive is 100 kilowatt then your braking resistor it has to be rated for 100 kilowatt but if you're not going to do a lot of braking your duty cycle is then uh, less then you can choose lesser the best case is if you do not know if you don't want to mess around with it even our uh, power installation guide would say if it's a 32 kilowatt a 37 kilowatt drive your braking resistor is rated for 37 kilowatt so easy question so uh, there's no uh, tightening of course that comes with a cost so if you really want to tighten up or uh, save cost on that you need to under, really understand how much is your duty cycle and there'll be some calculations so the power inflation guide will give us uh, some uh, guidance on that uh, but you can also uh, let us know because the easiest way is 100 kilowatt drive 100 kilowatt resistor but if you want to size down but we really need to understand uh, what's going on in the application and we try to optimize your rating okay as for the braking resistor there will be always a minimum resistance number so if you're going lower than that resistance then your braking resistors current will be higher so this current is uh, controlled by the minimum resistance of the braking resistor so this is uh, rated in a table inside the power insulation guide so it differs to model to model or kilowatt to kilowatt it would be different okay 
usually we are using breaking switch in dc minus negative in all drives why can't uh, switch on the dc side actually you can but uh, once you start giving them the option of uh, uh, switching it, it's it's more like uh, transistor switching on uh, like an npn connection so we will try to switch it on the negative end it's more for the load end and to protect the transistors uh, bias okay so it's if you if you imagine as a switch yes you can switch on the other side but when it's on the con uh, semiconductors uh, portion we need to bias the transistors and so on so in that manner the load is to be on the collectors end so your dc positive is always on the top then your resistor and then your transistor if it's a uh, uh, it's a pnp or p channel uh, mosfet and then we can switch it on the positive end yeah. but typically all most of the uh, switching is done on the uh, negative end as that is a standard for you it be used for EFT also as there is a standard for low voltage switch gears control gear assembly so can it be used for VFTs okay it depends on the standards but I've been approached by a few customers to say I, I need to have this specific standard but if you look at the standard they will have a scope of those standards okay uh, if I'm not wrong I forgot the stand, particular standard. There was a standard that uh, talks about switching gears has to comply to the specific uh, application and so on. But that's scope itself talks about uh, uh, constant speed applications. So once you change the speed, it, in, inside the scope, it will have an exclusion saying that it does not apply for electronic uh, controllers, which has a capacity to vary the speed. So uh, when we talk about standards, it really means we need to go and look at the standard. What does it cover? What scope does it cover? Most of the times, the standards that go for switch gears and control gears would not apply for VFT. So it's totally different, uh, uh, I would say, a different game or different standard. Because switching gear is more like uh, just switching and there'll be standards for noise on, on its own, your mechanical uh, requirements and so and so. So for VFDs, they are not a mechanical switch in, in, a, in a way. Sometimes it may apply for soft starters, these uh, standards for low voltage switch gears and control gear assemblies. It may apply to soft starters, but we really need to look at it. But most of the times, it would not apply for VFD. Also, if you have question on specific standard, we may be able to check for you. You can uh, send a query later on if you need to. Uh, what is the class uh, i'm not really sure about the class uh, i'll have to come back to you on this if you don't mind okay is there a uh, difference between input choke and output choke? there is a difference input choke is uh, applied on the input section so its purpose is different output choke is to reduce uh, notching uh, it, it, I wouldn't say notching it to reduce uh, noises to, to, to make uh, uh, how to say you have output choke whenever you have very long cables whenever you have uh, uh, load sharing so in that manner yes you use output choke so the, the, the function of input choke and output choke is totally different so output choke deals with the noise the signal everything on the output section to the motor input choke really deals with the power grid power quality on the grid section so whatever that comes before the drive so it deals with that i mean not, not really exactly before but from the grid to the drive it's input choke so it deals with the harmonics it deals with the uh, power notching and everything on the input section so output choke is for motor Sometimes, I'm not very sure, but sometimes the output choke can be used for input choke, but this depends on the impedances. So whenever we're talking about input choke, we talk about uh, the millihenry, the inductance of the choke, 
so we need to match that inductance then you can use that but typically when we are using for our output choke and it input choke you'll have a different number or different uh, inductance for a same drive on a for an input choke and a for output choke okay uh, participation uh, certificate yes there will be one is that possible for you to answer okay Yes, uh, we are available later by the end of the slide. I'll, I'll provide an email address so that you can uh, send us query. No problem with that. Uh, IEC 61439. Okay. Let me check on that. I'll uh, I'll try to see. But uh, this is not a typical standard that applies for VFT. But uh, I'll, I'll check on the end whether this the, the scope of the standard is co uh, covers the VFT. Okay, what is an EMC filter? EMC filter is electromagnetic compatibility filter. So basically, uh, we, are, we, are, we do we do introduce uh, high frequency noises into the system. So when we talk about harmonics, those are low frequency noises. So EMC uh, electromagnetic uh, interference is more of a high frequency uh, interference so emc filters are dealing with those high frequency noises okay how do you calculate the ratings of sex effects of the input choke uh, as for us uh, we already have a uh, specific uh, rated numbers i mean let's say for specific uh, drive we have an input choke of this size we have a specific part number for that so uh, other than that, we, we already have those uh, like a table for you to choose from. Yep. Okay. Uh, can you show us a sample for standard design knee deck panel? Okay. We I think for this uh, we may have to have a session for DFS. That's basically. Uh, I, I, I cannot promise anything on that, but uh, we could uh, we could share a DFS, a drive freestanding type of drive for IP54 or IP55 uh, drives. Can you, yeah, basically, that's a standard. Okay, so let's move on. we will run through a quick set of a wiring on the control section so this uh, we won't be going through a very extensive list of control wiring because it can be infinitely available so it can be any kind of wiring depending because the drive is configurable so you can choose to have a terminal 11 to be connected to something else terminal 12 to be connected to something else so it really depends so i'll run through the standards by default these are, these are the quick, uh, simple ones that we always use. Most of us will use this. So in cases where you don't, uh, these configuration don't work for you, you can always come back to us because uh, we are available to support you uh, to really understand your need and then uh, make shift. Because since the drive is configurable, we can do quite a lot of things with the terminals available to us. Okay. So one way to control a drive is analog voltage control. So that's basically like uh, you can have a potential meter, a knob, from zero to hundred percent, you can play. Uh, you can adjust the knobs to say to tell the drive run at fifty percent of the speed. So if, you, uh, if it's a thousand five hundred RPM motor, if you want to run at seven hundred fifty, just put it at fifty, then it runs. So that's potentiometer like manual control. Then you can have a PLC analog voltage output. So if your PLC can have an analog voltage output uh, port or terminal, you can use that and use the PLC tell the drive or to, to instruct the drive to run it let's say uh, 50 hertz 50 hertz is 100 percent so plc would say 100 percent 0 to 10 volt 10 volt to the drive then the drive runs at 100 percent speed it could be 80 percent then the drive runs at 80 percent so it's based on a percentage 0 to 100 percent it's an analog voltage as you can see the drive comes with 10 volt output so we're using a potentiometer so this is a potentiometer this is a typical uh, panel mount uh, potentiometer. So that's your terminal in, terminal out. So that's 10K. 
and then you can have this adjustable point pointing out to analog input one so you can have zero to ten volt to decide zero to hundred percent speed okay we have two analog inputs uh, you can also have a selection you can see here by default you have a selection so you can have two different inputs and you can select a digital switch to say okay run based on analog input one run based on analog input two that's one quick configuration if you don't have two just use one by all means okay so the analog input one is config configurable to analog voltage or analog current okay so for analog current this is how you would have a connection but analog input two is still a voltage so it, it's not configurable to a current so this is current or voltage this is just current so this is just voltage so you connect a zero volt and then your transducer let's say you, you have a pressure transducer you can connect to the analog input current or you can also have a, a plc output which is a current output to control the drive as current because uh, the reason why we would use a current mode is uh, once you have a very long distance if you're using a voltage mode you'll have losses and then your your voltage may, may drop so may not may it, it will drop so if you're using a current mode these would not affect your signal okay so that's why uh, whenever you're using a pressure transducers is usually on a current mode okay as you can see from the previous and now you all, or, all, always have a drive enable signal going in it could be a bypass when i say bypass it's like you're not really using it so you always connect it you can also also connect it to an emergency switch so that you can press emergency switch then your drive is disabled so you don't have any more talk it's not really a safe talk operation but uh, it's something similar but it's not safe talk off it's not 100 percent safety feature but you can use it as though okay then you can have run forward or run reverse and so on so these terminals are configurable by the way but this is a default settings so once i say configurable we can go into a lot of different com combinations of our terminal but i uh, will just stick to the default so this is the basic stuff then we have a preset so preset means uh, you can have a uh, reference select one our analog input two can be selected as a digital input as well earlier i said it's a voltage for analog but you can also choose that to become a digital input so you have one digital input here you have one digital input here so two digital inputs controlling the speed okay so that's basically a binary so zero zero is speed number one zero one is speed number two one zero is speed number three one one is speed number four so using the two switches you can control four speeds okay the drive has a uh, eight uh, built-in uh, speed capabilities so you can choose let's say if it's a pump you're not going to run at uh, reverse you're not going to run at reverse so basically you can just run forward and you can use this terminal to make a third point so you can have eight different speeds if you need to then you also have analog voltage or preset so this is something similar to the previous one but then our zero zero selection basically chooses analog reference one so this is like okay i have a reference i want to run at uh, based on my plc okay my plc is going to say uh run zero uh maybe 10 percent 20 percent 30 percent 50 percent it it depends on plc but then once i start selecting these switches let's say i want to run at fixed speed then you can go on with the two three and four so you have additional three speeds fixed speeds but also an analog reference so if I have like uh, suddenly I, I choose to have I'm running it based on PLC but then I want to uh, quickly have a quick run or like boost it up uh, high speed then I go high speed I select make a selection here so it really depends on what we're trying to do okay then we have a PID control mode which uh, al allows to use a PID here and then we have a reference here it, it's configurable but by default is your feedback is here your reference is going here and then our selection run forward PID enable so once we use this we would be able to use PID proportional gain integral grain and so on quite running short on time 
I'll try to answer a few questions. Okay. Without earthing, it will get affected. Could you please? Okay, if you do not have earthing on a VFD, it can go haywire. There's, there'll be a lot of noise. There could be there could be a lot of noise. So all those noises uh, would not be earthed. Even your control cables need to be earthed. So it's basically a noise protection one, and then another is uh, earth fault protection. So you don't get that if you don't connect earth. Analog current can be used. Uh, it's four to twenty milliamps for control, not a zero to twenty in our drive. Can we use bipolar analog? Yes, you can use bipolar. Zero holding facility. Yes, we do have a zero speed holding torque facility. Uh, digital input is four only. Yes, we have four, but then your digital input can be switched into uh, another digital input. There's an analog input too can be switched into digital input. Our analog digital output is configurable to become a input as well. So that's that gives you about uh, five six inputs. Okay, back to the slides. Okay, this is a worked out example, basically something similar to what we have seen earlier. Okay, a quick run at uh, menu zero. Okay, uh, menu zero is accessible using the keypad. So this would be the keypad. Okay, so it's accessible using the keypad. It's an LED display basically. Uh, the default access level is menu zero. You can always change that. Minimum required parameters to run a moto is available in menu zero. So this is all you would need to run a moto. Uh, and you can you don't really need to have a specific sequence to save the parameters in menu zero and it's customizable you can choose to have certain uh, parameters and so on so you're not be going too deep into this we will just have a quick look at it so enter button escape button up and down or decrease and increase keep at start button stop or reset so whenever we have a reset inside the manual say reset the drive this is the reset button and also, if you're using a keypad mode, it will stop the stop the motor. Okay, the ten numbers, the ten numbers that uh, ten parameters that you can have on a drive, on our drive. This is the first ten parameters that you need. Let's say we are going very basic, so all you need to know know is what is your lowest speed that you want to run sometimes you may choose to have okay, i run i don't want the drive to run lower than 30 hertz i don't want to run, drive the run to to run at uh, any lower than 25 hertz so we can set this as a minimum speed so once we start even though your analog reference is zero percent your zero percent starts at 25 hertz okay your maximum reference clamp is 50. we can actually go up to 550. that's basically uh over uh, overclocking that not really overclocking because uh, on a fixed speed, you just feeding, you're just feeding a 50 hertz to the drive. But if it's a VFD, VFD is basically a variable frequency drive, so we can vary the frequency. So we have the advantage over there, and we can switch up to 550 on our C200. So basically, 550 that's about uh, 100. That's that's like 11 times more speed. But that is provided your motor can handle it. They're not every motor is built to run at a very high speeds so that's not very high it's still low within because there's 100 uh, 1000 hertz uh, motors and all, all of that so it's still not very high but you need to make sure your motor can do that so typically we won't be needing that if you're needing that you'll be talking to us any, anyway so it's just to give you an idea that the drive can do the job acceleration rate is your starting Let's say if your initia is high, then you may need to start slow. You cannot just quickly start and then that will overload overload the drive and so on. So these are uh, for starting. Deceleration is for stopping. So you cannot stop too fast if you're not using a braking resistor. If your braking resistor is not uh, uh, sized up to handle those kind of stops, then we may need to increase the deceleration rate. Then we may need to increase the deceleration rate. Um, I'm having a 
Echo somebody has been wrong. Echo somebody has been wrong. Okay. So uh, then you have the drive configuration earlier. Uh, we... Then you have the drive configuration. Uh, so we have drive configuration. Sorry, uh, I had uh, some echo issues. Okay, I'm back. Uh, drive configuration AV analog voltage. We, we looked at uh, analog input as current AI. So this configuration would give you whether you're going to use a preset, whether you're going to use a PID. So this would uh, set the drive into certain uh, uh, few parameters would be set together when you change this. So you don't have to really worry about uh, whether I need to change the DI because earlier we saw the IOs were assigned differently. Terminal 14 is PID enable. On a different mode is reference select. On a different mode is analog input one and two. So all of these changes, you don't have to worry about it. So once you change this AV or AI to preset or PID, the drive does the work. It, it makes these changes on its own. Motor rated current is basically motor's value. Uh, motor rated speed is motor speed. Voltage is uh, motor voltage. And then the power factor is 0.85. And then the user security status is level one. By default, it's level one. So in level one, you just get zero to 10. So you just set these parameters on a simple uh, application, whether you're gonna start stop or you have pretty much most of the application can just start off with this you don't really need to mess up with a lot of uh, configurations okay but I, uh, of course if you need to if this uh, setup does not work for you of course definitely you need to have a level 2 or you have to have access to all of the parameters which is this okay so menu 0 basically is a list of parameters that's available from a list of menu up to 22 like 1, 2, 3, 4, 14, and 22. And you also have menu 18. You have option slots. So all of these are additional menus that allows you to do uh, advanced operation or advanced application with the drive. Okay. So if this doesn't cut, if this doesn't uh, help you get your application running, pretty much you'll be happy. You'll have to look at these uh, parameters. And of course, uh, we don't expect every customer to be well versed with these parameters. Uh, that's why we are here. So we provide uh, technical support in uh, each of our region. We have India, we have people in India, we have people in Indonesia, we have people in Thailand. We have people who can speak local languages so that uh, we can provide a better support to the customers to understand. Yes, we understand it's a very large number of menus, but as you can see, with these parameters, you can actually run that run the motor that that's all you need we are not really talking about auto tuning and all of those stuff this you can run the motor okay but if you need to do more yes then we come into this uh, section we we see whether we need to change in menu one menu two two three four five six and so on okay it will help you to achieve the best performance that your application needs okay so this is uh, basically a chart on how to use a keypad i'll leave it uh, because you you will be getting this material so i'll leave this with you for you to look through so back to questions give me a few more minutes i'll address a few questions please email me c200 can work in bipolar reference how external pid is possible in external pids meaning the drive already has a speed loop, sorry, not speed loop, current loop, and it has a frequency loop. <clears throat> so, uh, external PID meaning if it's a pressure, it could be a flow, whichever we are trying to achieve. So, uh, definitely the drive needs to know the value of, let's say, pressure. So, we need to uh, we need to connect the drive to a pressure transducer, or the drive. Let's say if it's a flow, then drive needs to know the flow. The drive needs to know the set points <clears throat> so it does have inbuilt a pid controller one one set of a pid controller so we can feed this information to the pid then we can uh, 
uh, you can uh, control the PID. So it depends what we're trying to do with an external PID. Okay. Email how though? Okay. Okay. Uh, the bipolar references would be. Uh, if you go into that, it will be very in-depth uh, discussion. So you can send the mail to this. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll, they've given me an email address to send. Okay, I can send the details to there. For motor tuning, uh, because we did not discuss about uh, what is a motor or how is the motor to a drive. So we did not discuss it here, but we did it in a previous uh, webinar. So we did, we talked about motors, we talked about drives, and how the drives would uh, work with the uh, would work with the motors. So motor tuning is basically the drive is trying to understand the motor. Okay, as I said earlier, with that ten parameters, the drive can run. It can run the motor. It can do the job. It can move the loads. Yes. I wouldn't say perfectly fine. It's fine. It's working fine. Okay. So other than that, why do we have to have auto tune? Because we we are trying to uh, understand the motor's parameters. Okay. It's like uh, if I if I know for those who have done electronic projects or something, uh, or even uh, college years or what, you have a resistor. You try to apply voltage, and then the voltage changes as you change the resistance right so let's say i have a 10k resistor obviously it will have a five percent uh five percent uh tolerance okay it could be five percent more or five percent less okay but if you are really trying to control the current precisely so without knowing those resistance so exact value of the resistance using a multimeter you can just assume if i if i put a 10 volt 10 voltage across a 10 ohms or 10k uh, ohms uh, resistance my ampere is going to be somewhat 1 milli ampere that's it right that's straightforward but then what about the 5% tolerance so did we take that into account okay can we just say okay uh, we just reduce the 5% so we can't if you're really trying to control the 1 milli ampere to, to, to its precise value then we need to know a precise value of the resistor otherwise we just know the voltage won't be able to know exactly what is the current so it, it you need to know something right so the voltage source is basically our our drive okay then the resistor is basically the motor so we're trying to understand the resistance or impedance of the motor when the drive when, when the drive is trying to run the motor so once we know this value we are able to achieve higher performance better performance optimized performance using the drive and the motor configuration. So whenever you're changing, okay, you have a uh, drive A and then motor A. You change the drive A to drive B, then the drive B needs to understand the motor, okay? Or you change the motor A to motor B, the drive A needs to understand the motor B. So basically we need to pair them together, okay? The drive needs to know motor better. The more it knows, the better. So that's why we need to do auto tune. For critical applications, we always advise Try to go for an auto tune. Sometimes they have a uh, distorted application. The motor is like not really moving properly. I have uh, vibration and all of that. So, 90% of the time, these kind of in, uh, these kind of issues, we just ask them to do an auto tune, and that's it. So, doing an auto tune or doing a rotating or stationary auto tune is much easier when you're trying to when you're doing a commissioning the first time, because you have sometimes you have the um, luxury of uncoupling the load. But once you're moving into the production, then you start coming up with, the, okay, I'm having some vibration, I'm having some heat losses here and there. And then we are, we, we try to do an auto tune back there. We won't be able to do rotating auto tune. So the best way is when you install it, try to do an auto tune, then you, you won't, 90% of the time, you don't have to worry about the performance. But if you didn't, yes, the motor is still running, but you still need to uh, uh, like uh, doubt yourself whether it's going to, come back with a fault or some, come back with an issue, or come back with a vibration or something. So you don't have to worry about that when you do the auto tune. Okay. Uh, yes, the participation certificates will be given, but uh, I think that will be communicated uh, right after by, I think by the marketing 
team. Janet will be able to advise on that. Uh, onboard PLC, onboard uh, function blocks. Okay, on this, uh, it would really take a very long uh, discussion on uh, onboard function blocks. Uh, to, to have a, a quick review, we do have some function blocks. We do have some functions on the on the drive, uh, but we have an onboard PLC. So whichever function block that's that you need, you can use the onboard PLC to, to add your own function blocks, basically. So that's yes. It, it, it's a quick yes, but uh, it depends what you're trying to do. Uh, you can always uh, you can always uh, email us on a query on a specific function block that you're trying to do. Yeah. Uh, and that's about it. Digital output a few, but if we need more, we, you do, we do have uh, option cards to, to extend our IOs. So you can extend a digi digital IO, you can extend analog IO, you can extend a relay output using SIIO. That's basically an extension. Is there a specific change in onboard PLC? Uh, not really. M701 and C200, they have a similar onboard PLC, but uh, they have slightly different, um, uh, slightly different uh, cap uh, capability, basically. Okay, but in, in terms of memory, they are same because M700 can do a lot more things. So the onboard PLC's limitation would be based on the drive's capability. Okay, the onboard PLC. You don't really need to have something to activate the onboard PLC, but you need to install or you need to program the drive using our machine control studio software. So that will just, uh, the onboard PLC is there. So you just need to use it, uh, 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 utilize it using our machine control studio. Uh, communication protocols. I think for this, I would uh, send you guys with the uh, catalog that can provide a uh, quick access to these. Well, typically, what we have is pro we have Profibus, Profinet, Ethernet, Ethercat, uh, RS485 mode bus. Uh, we have DeviceNet. What else? It's pretty much uh, most of the uh, protocols that's in Europe, we, we have it. But if you have a specific concern on a specific uh, protocol, you can always because there's always something you know, something new in the market. Something, uh, some some somebody comes up with some protocol. So uh, it's it's always good to check with us whether we, we can support a specific uh, protocol. Yes. Okay, I think that's about it. If there's no other questions, I mean, uh, yes, there will be many questions. Uh, I would uh, suggest uh, you to contact us by email and yeah thank you for joining us hopefully this was uh, informational for you guys and hope to meet you again soon in another session thank you have a nice day thanks everyone for joining enjoy your day ahead